We are working as a team and completely content with our personnel. <laughs> Unlike a certain four-time MVP, you've probably seen these quotes by now, but they are still fascinating. What is an F playmaker? We're going to get into that. It's not often you hear an elite player beg for help this way, but this is LeBron's plea. Please, baby. Please. We're not please. better than last year from a personnel standpoint. We're a top-heavy team. I just hope that we're not satisfied as an organization. I'll be 33 in the winter, and I ain't got time to waste. We need a F playmaker. Still don't know what F means. I'm not saying you can just go find one like you can go outside and see trees, which is my favorite part of this quote, by the way. Trees are abundant. You can see them everywhere. I didn't say that. It's been a, and I don't know what the S is for either, 2017 so far. LeBron then backtracked a bit yesterday on Twitter saying he's not mad at management and complimenting general manager David Griffin on the, quote, great job he's done. Cavs have lost five of their last seven games do they have a roster problem, guys, or some other kind of problem? I ain't mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think where LeBron is, is, is coming from is, um, you know, he, he talked about the organization being complacent. And, 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 and Pat Riley wrote a book, and, and he coined a phrase called the disease of more. After you win a championship, everybody wants more money, mm -hmm. more minutes, but they don't come back as hungry. And trying to win that second championship, you know, most teams fail and most organizations do fail also. And I think what LeBron is, is trying to, you know, signal and give the organization a wake-up call and saying, hey, I know we won one, but Golden State has gotten better. San Antonio, who we just lost to, they're a better team. And that team over in Canada has gotten better and they may end up possibly getting Millsap. We got to get better and we can't be complacent as an organization. And I think that's the message that he's trying to send. So do you think LeBron is saying what he means or sending a message to everyone within the organization and everyone within that locker room? You know, I think it's every, all of that. And I think some of it, listen, you're frustrated. You, remember, this is a guy I've been in the final six straight years. And at the end of the day, nobody's going to knock the other guys if they don't win it. But everybody's going to talk about the fact whether or not he did. Right. And, you know, that talk about the playmaker and all that stuff, that's all fine and dandy. But let me think, the last three losses, 126 to Golden State, 124 to uh, New Orleans, and then 118, 118 yeah. in, in that third loss. And so they need a defensive playmaker. That, that would help, too. Remember, they don't have the bigs. Tristan Thompson... You know, losing uh, Birdman, they don't have the backup on that front line. They are getting manhandled. And, and that's an area where they can somehow fix internally. But don't think for a moment they don't miss J.R. Smith. And the fact that they're also trying to integrate Kyle Korver, whose style of play is different than what they've been accustomed to doing the last two years. So all that stuff goes into it. And I would also say don't forget, they went through this same stuff last year. They are not built for the regular season in the way that Golden State and uh, San Antonio are. They, they don't overwhelm you with just the talent, you know, and they're not the offensive juggernaut. So they're going to have more ebbs and flows in their regular season than those teams are. But uh, obviously he knows his group better than any because he knows what's going on internally. And there may need to be something to kind of just rattle the chain. They're not going to fire the coach again. Right. But they may need to send some kind of a message to get these guys to play at a higher level. They've been uh, – they just haven't been good in the seven-game stretch, which is the worst of, of – Worst stretch of its sort since LeBron returned to Cleveland, but 24th in defense in these seven games league-wide, still 21st in offense. They just haven't been a very good team lately. Yeah, but I think we forget. LeBron came back to Cleveland to deliver a championship, right? He delivered. He also came back to show the organization that he left the first time how it's done. He learned in Miami how to go to the finals, win a championship, come back, win it again. He also learned how to, how to lose them twice something that he experienced before in Cleveland. So he's trying to impart upon the entire organization the level of urgency you have to have if you want to be a repeat champion. Nobody in that, in that organization other than LeBron, Ty Lue, and James Jones know what they, – they're the only guys that know what that really feels like. And I think Le, this is LeBron's kind of siren call. He's sending up a smoke signal to the organization, to his teammates, to the fans, that we cannot feel comfortable about where we are because we just saw the two teams that will be standing in our way potentially. You see Golden State, you see San Antonio, and if, if I'm LeBron and I'm looking at it and measuring on the floor where we fit against these two teams, 
we got to get better. And I and I, I I get what he's saying. I know he always gets agitated this time of year and starts subtweeting and you know, <laughs> sub -tweet. sub yeah, you know, and start, start staring everybody with you know with these cryptic comments after yep. games. But this to me is LeBron setting off the flare that hey, the, the championship celebration, the parade is over. We got to get back to the business of trying to win this thing again, and it's going to take a better effort all around, front office, everybody.